Um, welcome. I'm Renee Barrio, Chief Curator here at the McNay Art Museum. And this is our fourth and final presentation of Artists Looking at Art for 2017. So I'm delighted to be welcoming Megan Solis tonight and to welcome you as well. Um, and this year for Artists Looking at Art, we've invited um, four artists, all who work at the McNay, who, but who also are artists. So it's been great because we've had this opportunity to look at another side of artists and colleagues that we work with on a daily basis and see, uh, see their creative side. And I believe all three of our other, tonight we have all four of our artists looking at art from, from this year, uh, Jeremiah, um, Julie, <laughs> Jeremiah, Julie, and Mario. I think all three of you are here. Um, so thank you for joining us. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with this program, every year the McNay invites uh, at least four artists from the San Antonio area to present work for a two month period and then we have a, a public conversation where we get to explore a little more about their art. Megan's work, she has three video works and an assemblage, those are uh, installed upstairs in the octagon. So after this presentation you'll have an opportunity to go up there and she'll be up there uh, and you can talk to her in front of the works and talk to her about the works. Uh, so as soon as, as we have our end of our question and answers here, let her get up there so she can uh, be up there and you can sort of um, congratulate her there. So uh, we're just going to start. Uh, I want to start by just exploring a little about your biographical background, where you're from, like where you went to school, how you got here tonight, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I grew up here in San Antonio. Uh, I was born in a small little town in California, but um, all I really remember is um, growing up here in San Antonio. So I lived like in a little town right outside called Kirby. And I went to Wagner High School, which is in the Judson High School District. So it's sort of on the northeast side. Um, so uh, our mascot was the, ma the Thunderbirds. Is, is, that yeah. important? is that important to you? <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was right, they built it right near like 9-11. So the person that they, uh, it was like the Thunderbird, the plane, because um, it was named after Karen Wagner, who um, I think, I don't know if she died in 9-11, but she uh, was in the military kind of mm -hmm. during that time and had some involvement. So they named it after her. So that school was built. So it's interesting because that high school actually, uh, the person who designed it is a prison architect. So our school really, <laughs> like, it really looks like a prison. Um, because he designed all of the prisons in Texas, oh. but I don't know his name. Yeah. <laughs> and then after you got out of prison, you went, yeah after you, yeah you went to college. <laughs> yeah, I went to school. I went to uh, just the community college, like the Alamo College, this year, and just did my basics, just because it was a lot less expensive than doing like a four-year program. And then um, I went to Texas State to go to school for design because I thought I wanted to be a designer. And I failed all of my classes and came back to San Antonio to study art. <laughs> and then you did that? Did yeah, you... yeah. I just, um, and it turned out for the best. I, I like, I love UC, UTSA and it was the best move. So, that, so you went to school at UTSA? Yes, okay. yes. I got my BFA there. So I think we're going to jump right into the work. Okay. Okay. Um, what are we looking at? Uh, so this is uh, t from 2014. This is one of the kind of like older paintings. Uh, I it's uh, <laughs> it says guns, pizza, and pussy on it, and that it's just I, I wanted to put it in there just because it was it was work that I was making that maybe like although it wasn't probably the most smartest work was just something that. Uh, I feel I still take elements in it uh, from work like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the work that I was doing was really illustrative. I really liked, I still influenced by like comic books and graphic novels. At this time I was making my own comic books and going to comic cons. So a lot of the characters were really strong, like females really just brazen and really just kind of out there. So I just wanted maybe to shock a little bit. Maybe it's like my youth just wanting to kind of put it all out there, but I still look at it and I, I still like that work, even though what I'm making is so different now. And um, it seems like you, you chose it to start because you've, it's, to me it has a lot of elements that we see throughout the work, the kind of, kind of th thread that kind of ties all the work together. Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, 
a lot of my work is has humor in it. Like I like to just as a person, I like to laugh and joke, and I like people around me to be people that have a great sense of humor. And uh, I think that's one thing I like to keep in my work, even though it deals with a lot of darker elements. It can it's self-deprecating, I mm -hmm. guess. And that was around the same time. So this is a, a work that I made as an undergrad. It still has that very illustrative style, um, but it's obviously in a sculpture. I think this is when I was, I think I was in Ken Little's class when I made this. Um, and he was the one that told me a lot about like the, um, the Harry Who. He was the one that introduced me to the Harry Who, and I was blown away. Right, so the Harry Who from Chicago. Yeah. So, so artists who were kind of involved in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, using a lot of kind of cartoonish imagery, right? Yeah. So that I could see that connection to the Harry Who, and that they were, you were had you known about them before? No, I, Ken Little was the one that really introduced me to like specifically the Harry Who, and he was showing me all of all of this, and it blew my mind away. Like I was just like, oh, okay, I didn't like. Um, I didn't really understand or connect my work to anything, and then I, it gave me a lot of context mm -hmm. to what people were doing before me. And, and I take it that sign in the back is not part of the work, it's just, <laughs> no, just no. the sign in the back, right? Yeah. Okay. So this looks like it's actually painted on a structure, a building, or? Yes, uh, so this was a mural that I made, I think, uh, during the summer of 2000 and 14, I think, at, it's right behind the High Wire Arts Gallery on South St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. And I did this uh, during an internship there, and that was a part of my project. I, I wanted to create a mural. So uh, that was my first mural. I did it all by myself in like the summer heat. Um, I almost I, like, fell off the ladder like a couple of times uh, <laughs> there, but yeah. <laughs> and the characters in this, they, I mean, they seem reminiscent of the things we've seen so far. So do you have these kind of characters you develop and, and they use them over and over and they reappear? Um, well, um, I've, I think that's a recent thing where I have chosen to create a character and try to dissect it as mo much as possible. I think with this work, I just wanted to create like characters in general that were just really kind of disgusting um, and were really wild and um, didn't care about anything. Uh, so I really like the grotesqueness of characters like that. So she has like very pimply legs and she's on this unicorn that's like vomiting and it's just a vomited kind of painting. And um, I like the idea of maybe just, I just wanted to put it all out there and kind of in a very punkish, like girl, riot girl type of way. And does this mural still exist? It does. It's very faded, and then the like, if on there's like wood panels on the windows. They've like fallen off, and like it's very decrepit, which makes it. I was debating on putting that picture be, um, on instead because it, it just made it have more character to me. Like I, I like the idea that people graffitied on it, and like it fell off and kind of became this really sad, <laughs> this really sad paint. And you know what's interesting to me when I look at this, just this kind of um, proscenium almost, this kind of tableau you've created. And it's interesting because I know you do, you're kind of ventured into performance work, and we're going to see in a, in a few minutes. And it's interesting how this already sort of anticipates this kind of sense of performance. Um, did you do performance at this time? No. No, the, the per, uh, perform, I've really only been doing performance like with myself for about a year, I would say. It's really actually recently something I've done very recently, so it's very new for me. Um, well, this is, in two, I think this is 2015. This was at a Silkworm Gallery, and these were painted on wood panels, and this is when I started using a lot of spray paint, and um, I wanted, I like using spray paint because it was so instantaneous and quick, and it kind of fulfilled something for me just to like mark, and then it was there, so I liked, using that as a painting format. And it seemed to go well with what I was trying to accomplish with these like really manic characters, like something that was very like of, uh, of on the cusp of something that just happened. I, I didn't want it to look too planned out. Mm -hmm. So um, these were three paintings. Um, and I started using collage a little bit with this. So like 
the, the very last one was my friend Julie that I face painted her and I took her photo and I kind of pasted it with this character. So that's kind of when I started wanting to do a little bit of collage. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a portrait? Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. a very has she seen this? Um, yes, yeah, she has, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think she likes it. But I, li I like dissecting the body a little bit more. So I like having it, like these characters that were like uh, kind of disconnected. So the bodies were kind of like, kind of just shapes and kind of, you knew it was a body, but I didn't, um, I was real, I didn't necessarily want to make it realistic at all. Certainly not. Yeah. <laughs> and this looks like it has collage elements. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this has more collage elements and this is more of the face painting. So these are a lot, um, a lot of these people, some of these people are in the room. Chris Castillo's in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris, and my sister's in there, some older friends and Jose is in there. Um, so I face painted them, took their photo and kind of cut out their hands and I wanted it to be very f uh, directional so uh, you can see the hands kind of giving it rhythm and you can kind of follow although it's very still just. Right, I mean that, that kind of movement strikes me in all the work. There's this really strong sense of movement and kind of animation. Um, and I also know that she used a lot of these kind of like using a smiley face and, yeah. <laughs> and these very bright colors and things. So there's this kind of um, alluring quality to your work. And then there's that repulsive side. Yeah. Um, and it seems like you're interested in kind of teetering between these two things. Yeah, I, I definitely do like the idea of someone being both attracted and repulsed by something. Um, you mean in general in, in life? Or? In general, yeah. Well, mostly with, mostly with the, my work, I like okay. the idea of people liking it, but, but like being very confused and not understanding as well. So these are like actual small little collages. And um, these were the aftermath. So um, in 2015, I was in a residency in Finland, and I made these just small little drawings. And... Um, I kind of would cut up those drawings and I started using fabric a lot and kind of dissecting different drawings and creating like little, little like six by seven collages from them. So that's probably when I started getting interested in the texture of different fabrics and using like little small drawings that I would create like in a diary way and just kind of warping them and changing. And then are these shaped or are they actually sitting on that white rectangle? They're sitting on, they're um, kind of pasted onto a pa paper too deep. Mm -hmm. And so these seem, to me, they're, they seem more formal than some of the other work in, mm -hmm. terms, of, in terms of the compositions and in terms of the, the way you're presenting them. Um, was that sort of maybe, were you react, these were made in Finland, right? Yes. Was it something about that environment or the space you were in or the studio that maybe had this, some impact yeah. on the way these were made? Well, I definitely, I think that Finland was a really, going there was probably the best and worst thing that happened to me. Um, only How because long were you there? I was there for a month. Um, and it was, uh, the residency was kind of in this isolated part of Finland. So it wasn't really in a city. It was kind of in the middle of the woods. And I, it was with about, I want to say like t 10 other artists. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so all I did was make work. That's the only thing I did. And that kind of uh, really helped me figure out things and figure out what I wanted to do. And when was that residency? That was in 2015. So it's about two years May, ago, a year and a yeah. half ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, um, this is called put the Pepto-Bismol in your mouth as long as possible. This isn't me, this is my sister. I made my sister do this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this is um, a performance that, this was at UTSA in, the, in our Painting Forest studio. And I kind of, the background is this large scale installation collage. And I face painted my sister and put this kind of paper on her to kind of, I wanted her to look like a drawing or this kind of put to life, like the collages or my characters put to life. And the performance itself was just, I just told her, like I gave her pe like Pepto-Bismol and just told her like, keep it in your mouth as long as possible. That's all I told her. And then she kind of just, just she had it and then she would just have to like spit it out. So you can see in the next photo, just kind of like 
how it turned out. It kind of just looked like this snuff film. Like it mm. was like these bright white lights and it was just Pepto Bismols everywhere and it became just really um, <laughs> really how, how long did this performance last? Um, the performance is, I edited it down, the video, I think it's probably about 12, like seven to 10 minutes maybe, the actual. But the performance lasted a long time and it was really awkward because like it was late at night and at one point she, we were really into it. Like we, it was like me, my brother, our friends and we were all there and we were just like watching this happen and then like a custodian comes in, opens the door and like looks at us and we're just looking at him and like he just closes the door and we're just like, oh yeah, we're doing something really weird. Like so, what are we doing? <laughs> you didn't do the performance in front of an audience per se, right? No. So it, it performed for a camera? Yeah, it's just me. So I was just recording this happen and I think my brother was helping us, um, our mutual friends, like a couple of people. So it was just us, like in this space. Oh, and this is um, this was uh, still at UTSA. This is uh, kind of like when I started thinking about assemblage, like assemblage of items. So um, I was really interested in attraction and repulsion, and I was like, well, how can I get a more visceral response? And I didn't think I could get that with just drawing, I guess. So a lot of the materials were really becoming more symbolic. And for instance, like I think this was like, part of it's like a, a candy ring pop I found on the ground that underneath it is cotton candy that's like oxidized. Mm -hmm. So I wanted things to be like more, uh, not as, like intangible, like like if you saw cotton, if you saw this piece when the cotton candy was fresh, it would look so much different. So having it transform and not be um, sustainable. Uh, that's this new this series was all about. And so, are the objects in these these pieces they, are they in the state you found them in, or did you alter them to create the, them in the state you want them to be? Usually, I altered them mm -hmm. and arranged them in a way that um, either I thought what made them more interesting just formally like like just thinking of normal like collage like just putting things and placing them or just like the idea of putting hair maybe next to food just that automatic repulsion of like seeing something um, and getting that response of being disgusted and then you said they were they were symbolic what are they symbolic of uh, different things. Like um, personal symbolism? Or? Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just either it was either personal or just um, whatever. It, different things. Can you give us a little clue? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, either if, like, for instance, like a lot of, um, a lot, like with the Pepto Bismol, like I, if, like, I, wanted, I, because I hate Pepto-Bismol, but it's something I've always had to take because I've always had like digestive issues of like ha being bloated or like this idea of like not being in your body. So I was really interested in the idea of like something so artificial and so um, attractive like pink Pepto-Bismol and the, but the smell of it making me repulsed. Um, so like with these pieces, I wanted to turn something that I like, like pizza, and um, uh, like for instance, like that is like that was pizza that had been rained on, and um, I let it mold over, and I like nailed it, and I smashed this face. So um, <laughs> a little bit of like that self-deprecation and self, mm -hmm. maybe self-loathing a little bit, um, but making it in a way that was still that you know that was still kind of funny and silly. Um, so these are, um, this n next series is from this uh, residency I did last year at Hello Studio Gallery called Christina is a Coward. So this, uh, this is one of the kind of small little paintings that I did uh, for that show. And who's Christina? Uh, she's, she, no, <laughs> there's no Christina, she's made up, but, um, and I think I just, a lot of the things are not, like, I really don't want people to kind of decipher too much because uh, most of the time they're made up. Sometimes they're real people, but I kind of want it to be something that is mysterious. Like who's Christina? She's not real, but some of the, the names that I use are real and are very personal. So mm -hmm. I like making things totally fiction sometimes. And that's an installation shot. Of the exhibition? Of the exhibition, mm -hmm. yes. So. Um, I think like I painted a happy face mural. Those are like soft sculpture 
pieces that I nailed to the wall. So what was really cool and what um, I really loved about this show is that um, the studio is right behind that wall. So I was there, I, I was there before work, after work, just like the whole place was a mess. Like you can ask anyone involved, like just scattered. So, which was really cool for me because I was able to really transform the space mm -hmm. easier than rather than bringing in a piece to a, a location. Mm -hmm. um, everything was being created and I could switch it right then and there. If it didn't work, I put it down. And I, that's what I really loved about working at Hello Studio and having that opportunity. Um, because you don't get that very much as an audi uh, artist. Sometimes it doesn't work. Right. And when it doesn't work, you have to like figure it out. I was able to have time to like make it perfect it, mm -hmm. I guess. So these are individual works from that show? Yes. And so these um, are stuffed sculptures? Yeah, so mm -hmm. a lot of these are like, like things from like my high school wardrobe or things that I've thrifted. Or you and, kept your high school clothes? Well, like they're at my parents' house and I can kind of like sift through bins and that's what I, I never wear them. So I thought, oh, I'm like just not wanting to, me being maybe cheap and not wanting to buy new materials. But I thought like, well, Christina as a coward was very much like I wanted to use high school tropes. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just use like my high school clothes and kind of it'll go into this very like very passive aggressive mean girl um, overall theme that I had for Christina as a coward. And is that, was that your Winnie the Pooh? Um, no, that was oh. thrifted. Oh. So I think we're, we're going to see a performance now, right? Yeah, so this was, um, there, I did three different sets of performances for Christina as a coward on three separate days. Um, this was the first one where... This is you performing. This is me, yeah. This is actually me. And this is the first time I, I think I ever performed in front of people. So it was super nerve-wracking for me. And I'm actually... So I'm taking this Furby. I don't know if people remember, like, the Furby doll. It was, like, this very phenomenon when I was a kid. Um, it would talk, like, and kind of... It was just this whole... Everyone had one. Every girl had one. Like, every, like, kid that I knew. And they would talk to each other... And uh, yeah, so I like got it and I like put Lone Star into it. But um, it was funny because the curator, Elena, like um, we were like researching it and she to told me like more about like the Furby and she was saying that they created the Furby to like over time for people to treat it like a human being so you're more sympathetic to it. So, and it was like this toy that kind of you gradually became more sympathetic to. So I thought that was really interesting. How long does the performance last? Well, the actual performance, I think all of them are around half an hour mm -hmm. for each performance. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of cut down and clipped too. Mm -hmm. So when you, have a, when you show this to us, are you seeing this as a documentation of that performance or is this just an art, another art generation of the artwork? Um, I think this is more of a documentation um, of the performance. And I think we have another performance on this. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is the first one. This one should end in just a second. And then the second one is this right here. So this one was called k -Pel and the Jeep Escape. And it's the same space? This is the same space. This mm -hmm. is an, um, an installation that I created out of foam board. And um, I had a Barbie Jeep that I spray painted. And that's me performing. And that one had more of a narrative. <laughs> yeah, it was a disaster. No, um, <laughs> but I had this kind of like idea of like um, this, these dolls were connected and I was like only a puppet here. So I was manipulating these dolls, but you find out with like the, the tablet that um, the yellow doll kissed the uh, doll, the Jeep doll's boyfriend, and she found out about it. So now she has to die. Like, that's, that's it. So this is, you kind of mime all this? Uh, well, I wrote it on that little tap, the oh. Etch-A-Sketch. Oh, so okay. I wrote it and kind of showed it to everyone, kind of like, um, like almost like a play, like a soap opera way. Right. So they kind of knew what was going on. captioned Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so when you do this kind of performance, is that scripted? Do you know um, what you're going to be doing, or is it just more intuitive? <laughs> yeah. I know basic ideas of what I'm doing, but I kind of, it's, I kind of let the performance be what it is. 
Oh, and this is a new, um, uh, so this was, this was still, this was right after the residency scene last year. And this was part of a show, um, it was only on Instagram. So this was curated by Brandon Zeck, and he wanted um, this group of artists to each overtake Performance Art Houston's Instagram for a week. So it was almost like a digital residency. So each of us had a week, and we had control over this Instagram, the password, and we were allowed to post whatever we wanted to. So I um, used this um, to create another character called Melissa. Um, and, and you're Melissa. I'm Melissa, yeah. <laughs> and so this is all in my apartment. And I wanted it to be like super voyeuristic and super kind of like you're seeing inside her life. So these are her selfies. And does Melissa exist outside of this Instagram week or? No, was that, no, this was is was just a... for Instagram. So this is another performance. Yes, so she just worked out and now she's eating. Wait, this is <laughs> Melissa. Yeah, so this is like post-workout. <laughs> And do you make all of these costumes? And yeah, yeah, usually they're just things that I thrift or I kind of like, and the body is like a spandex suit or like a wig that I put together. And I think I just put googly eyes. Melissa? Yeah, so, it's reading a romantic novel. And are you filming these yourself? My brother actually helped film. Some of them I had to like tape the phone to the wall so I could do it, but I think my brother was filming me this. that novel or you're making yeah, this up? I, I pre-recorded my voice and I warped it on a, like an app and I played it so this is like just playing in the background on the speaker. So all of them were a minute long because it was for Instagram so a lot of them are kind of cut off. Um, and so I, I started like leading people into her life and I you know I was like well I wanted to add more characters to her and kind of make her a little bit more complicated like she had a past um, so I created this uh, character called Jessica Vaughn and Jessica Vaughn is me um, but her and Melissa had, had, were friends like you find out they were friends and she starts bullying her Jessica on Instagram. Melissa? Um, uh, Melissa Jessica is Melissa's friend so she's like a model, she's an animal lover and rides bikes. Like she's just this very like, she posts pictures of salads. She, you can see there, she like posts a picture of Melissa and she's like, I suck. Like she just hates her. And you're like, well why? <laughs> so um, so I, I kind of create this character and I start bullying her on, um, as this Jessica Vaughn character. And then people started defending Melissa because they thought it was real. So a lot of people were like defending her and they were like, well, how could you do that? Block this person. Like they were so upset. And no one realized, like if you see, I think the next one is like, it's obviously me. Like I would post pictures of her with like these celebrities, but it's just like my face. And I was just like, how can you not realize that? Like I guess people didn't like think that it was fake they thought someone made an account to like be mean and hmm. people were defending me which it was just really this is interesting. all on online all on Instagram mm -hmm. yeah so I think the next photo is like two screenshots so you can see like Jessica Vaughn she's like gross you're fat she's pathetic and blah 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 and then there's people that are like oh my god did they start that account just to harass you that's lame I, I'm sorry you're being trolled and like so people thought like this was really happening to me and they were defending me but um, which is really like interesting but also like kind of like really 
funny how just fast people are to like mm -hmm. kind of this is all the same week yes this is all in one week so i was just <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this is, this is me responding to jessica <laughs> okay so this is melissa again yes i wanted to take this video I'm curious. Are you looking at like like videos that people post in, in, on, in, in earnest? Yeah, on, I, on, on the internet, yeah. and then you're sort of <laughs> riffing off of that. Yeah, I think like a lot of it was like very much like the context of social media, like the silliness of it, the kind of drama of it. Um, like uh, specifically, I was thinking of like the like these people they have like have these reaction videos and they communicate to their followers and it's this very like one-on-one -on -one, like weird personal relationship people have so like people like their new celebrity are like youtubers and it's really it's it's cool it's really like but it's also really bizarre sometimes how like people feel they have to like if something's happening in their life they have to tell their followers because they expect it they mm -hmm. expect to know everything about you mm -hmm. um, um, and like the t-shirt that I'm wearing too is funny because like it's Britney Spears. I don't know if y'all remember when she like has a mental breakdown and she shaves her head and like hits like the, this bat into a car and like her shirt has, has said that, has that on her shirt. So it's just like this pop culture, it's like a new pop culture spectacle. Like it's mm -hmm. like this train crashing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to be everyone to see this train crashing with her life. So this is, she threw herself a birthday party, Melissa, and she invited, I actually invited people to come to my apartment. No one came. <laughs> and she ends up just alone opening her presents, and now she's going to blow out her candles. Thank you. Happy So you really invited people to this and no one came? No one came, yeah. No one came, which was kind of fun, uh, made it better because <laughs> it was just sadder, so I guess. <laughs> did you, you tape it, your videotape yourself? Yeah, so like at that point, like there was no way I could keep asking people to come because I would do this like after I got out of work, like every evening. So this, like I had to keep like my life up, but like there was no way I could ask people to keep coming. So I would just end up like getting like a selfie stick tape, duct taping it, and then like putting it to facing me and just record and try and get it in the right. Like it was just a lot of finagling these angles, which. Were you working here at the time? Yeah, I, this was um, last year. Mm -hmm. And they were back to some collage? Yeah. These so are this, more recent. This is, these, this is from this year. So all of these are um, the newest mm -hmm. works. And this one um, is called um, He Cried When He Burnt the Rug, I Cried When I Had to Get Obamacare. So, <laughs> um, so this is like a soft sculpture. So it's like kind of a quilted fabric. And you can actually see if you, uh, some of the pieces from Melissa. So I like kind of using those performance costumes into different pieces because I don't like losing them. I feel like it's a waste. So um, I wanted to attach that into this new piece. And so I kind of quilted it and then I stapled it to a canvas and I stuffed it. So when you see it, it's like very reminiscent of like a bloated kind of stomach. And um, yeah. <laughs> This is another assemblage. So this is um, called the ring, the bling, and the acrylics are from CBS. So it, you have to see very closely, but like, but like the hands have like acrylic nails from like CVS and like there's toothpicks in it. 
Um, it's more of kind of like this, it's still like an, an arrangement. I like ordering it, but it's kind of splayed and almost like a, it's almost like a serial killer would kind of dissect this duck and like. And this on a kind of an old Afghan sort of yeah, so that was thrifted, thing. yeah. Mm -hmm. And instead of you know, when I look at it. I think about kind of a crime scene. Yeah. So yeah. there's something you know. There's all these in all the work. There's this reference to the body. So there's this, this you know, kind of ongoing kind of tension about the bodies, whether they're there or not. Um, so this is a character that just started from, this is from Daydreams, and all of this new work is from Daydreams and Other Monsters that was just up at UTSA. So this is a character called Charlie, and um, I created this character um, as this kind of transforming character. So um, you see Charlie throughout the, that show, and usually you can tell it's Charlie by the little insignia that I placed but it's kind of, I'm not sure what Charlie's gonna be. I know that I am wanna, right now it's kind of like this childlike character, but I kind of wanna make Charlie a little bit more depth and have more um, complexity to it. But I want, for that show I had different versions. Do, do your other characters, are they all still around and alive or do you sort of kill them off and move I kill, on? Yeah, I kind of move on. I think this is the first character that I've actually taken and I'm, I'm kind of want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look too happy. No, yeah. <laughs> and Charlie isn't really happy. Um, uh, well, you see different versions, like this kind of very digital version of him. Is this him. Charlie? No, oh. this isn't Charlie. Um, the Usually Charlie's like I kind of has very cartoonish and yellow and kind of brightly colored. Um, that one is very like almost like a child's drawing that I printed out on cardboard and then the one is it's like a painting sculpture um, relief kind of sculpture and um, like the teeth are tic tacs and melted tic tacs and um, it's kind of like seeing Charlie as like this manic version. So um, kind of like the reality and kind of the fantasy, kind of this glib Charlie and this very like wild. And this is a screenshot from um, He Is My Future. So this is like an animation. And uh, throughout this animation, this character, like this bald kind of um, character that has her mouth and an O is just blowing kisses like the entire, so the entire video is me singing the Everly uh, Brothers song, that dream, dream song. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's layered, so when you listen to it, the more you listen to it, the more kind of confusing it gets because um, you wanna, you want to hear, like you recognize the song and I feel like you want to like recognize the words but then it becomes more and more dissected and you just see her kind of making hearts and blowing kisses and um, it's kind of, um, when I see that video, I want people to feel sorry for her and kind of embarrassed for Did her. Did you say her name? Um, she doesn't have a name, but the title is "He is a, He's My Future." But she has no name. She has no name. It's um, it's probably more of like a self portrait. The um, the face is a drawing that I made of my own face, and I kind of through this app kind of melted it in with this three D mm -hmm. character. So I guess it could be me, but I don't know. <laughs> so th these are the three videos that are at um, upstairs. Upstairs, okay. yeah. Um, this one is um, called um, ASMR, uh, which is, um, if anyone doesn't know, it's this kind of, it's hard to explain, but basically people use it to go to sleep. Sometimes it can be sexualized, um, but it's basically this thing that some people have, some people don't, but it's like you having stim certain stimuli creating um, creates calmness. So like people on YouTube will like have like, will brush people's hair and usually like the sound of someone brushing you know your hair or different sounds like tapping um, and it's very quiet will um, it helps people go to sleep so um, I named it that so the performance this is on top of the library downtown mm -hmm. and it's just me and you're performing hair. yeah this is me performing and this is me this is called wake and bake wake and easy bake oven and um, these are like Tylenol, like different like tablets, like Pepto-Bismol tablets and Tylenol that I crush and I sniff like cocaine. Um, and then like it kind of goes into this beach scene. Like I, I went to Corpus Christi to go and my sister helped shoot that. 
So it kind of goes in between this kind of surreal, foggy morning beach in my apartment. Are you still performing live? Um, the only time I performed live was last year. I mm -hmm. haven't performed live really after that. I'm not sure if I am going to or not. I don't know if I liked it or not. I kind of like the idea of like no one seeing. Um, I think it changes. I don't know. Maybe I will right mm -hmm. now. But I'm an introverted person. I actually don't really like performing mm -hmm. in front of people. It, it's really hard for me. Is this the same? This is the last video. So this is, um, it actually uses the same song, the dream song, but it's actually So we're just bad. not hearing the sound. No, the yeah. So when you, if you watch it, you'll hear that song, but it's actually the band, the Everly Brothers, singing it this time. So it sort of connects to the He Is My Future. Um, but um, this is the same kind of character, but at a different setting. And there's always this kind of, like, ominous quality, right? Yeah. So there's something yeah. bad is going to happen, right? Yeah, I kind of wanted it Does something bad to... ever happen? Um, well, maybe, not really, but I like the idea of something being forebo foreboding, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of this kind of, I think it has a lot to do with like anxiety. Maybe anxiety for me means like, oh, like something bad is going to happen and nothing ever does. So it's all kind of made up <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway. I think we have another more video. Or? Oh, this is, I think this is the last video. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. <laughs> cool. So we're going to take a few questions if people have questions before we retreat to upstairs so people can see the work in person. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, we'll have just a couple of minutes. Or if there's anything you want to, to say. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh. Let's hope I. Oh, sorry. All right. Me first. Here, first. Me. I've got the microphone. Okay. I'm going first, baby. <laughs> so um, I'm curious about how how painting finds its way into your work because when I was first introduced to your work, I even though it was sculptural and yes, it was on the wall, I saw it more as sculpture. Yet there were so many gestures that had to do with painting, and even in your videos, there seems to be sort of marks that are made and I I guess I just want you I'm curious about how if you actually approach it in that particular way or if that's just something I'm projecting onto your work uh, I um, I've heard that a few times I think like um, Sarah has told me that like um, it's very painterly and I don't know if I'm doing it I studied painting at UTSA I was a painting major so I started painting before I um, did the performances, so I think that's still there. And I love painting; like I always love the um, the the making of a painting. There's nothing that beats making a painting. So I don't think I I go into it thinking like, oh, I am a painting background. Like I I don't really do that, but I think I, inevitably it's there. Yeah, because um, I think I, I still. I, that's how I started. So you're not, the painting we saw at the very beginning, the first painting, the kind of graffiti mm -hmm. comic book painting, you're not making those kind of paintings anymore. No, no, mm. no, I'm not. <laughs> but that, that sensibility still exists throughout. I think it does. I think it's like just in the personality. So like it's sort of outrageous. Like you can see, um, I, I think I see the outrageous and like the boldness of the characters in a different way. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same. I don't, I'm not making like illustrative, more illustrative mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. as much. I think there was a question in the middle. Excuse me. Here you go, ma'am. Thank you. I was kind of curious. I haven't seen your or heard your videos. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen or heard until tonight. But the influence I've heard a couple different times about the Everly Brothers. And I was wondering, with your age, which is fine, I mean, it's not the Beatles or something, but the Everly Brothers are going back a ways to me. So I was kind of curious as to what influenced you to have that, their songs or whatever, or parts of their songs included in your performances or uh, videos. I, th I think that specific song was not really for 
the nostalgia of like the time period. I think it was more of, um, well, the, like it was from daydreams and other monsters. So it, it, I really want to dissect like the idea of dreams, whether it be like for your future, the dreaming of like your hopes for relationships, um, your dreaming maybe just like the idea of something um, not being real. Um, and that song was perfect because it, to me, like, it, if you really look into the lyrics, it's really kind of creepy. It's very obsessive. Um, so for me, that song particularly was like really romantic, but if you really delve into it, it's really obsessive and not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> we had a question down here. <laughs> Get my work out of it. It's all good. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so it seems like you're using like bodies in pain a lot, and I feel like um, the history of bodies in pain in art is usually related to some sort of like religious inflection, and then like the body is like used as a vessel or used to be sacrificed for something. So I wonder, like, is there purpose behind the suffering? In your work, and I don't mean like, like mm -hmm. defend yourself. I mean like, is do you think of suffering as productive, or do you think of suffering as meaningless? Um, probably something in between. I think like, um, I think a part of the work that I make is because I'll, I I've always maybe felt like an outsider or a loner, and I'm alone most of the time, and that's how I've always been. Um, I think I'm like I'm an introverted, extroverted person, um, but particularly with what I like about performance and what I hate about performance is that I've, uh, I'm doing something that I would normally never do as a person, and that's what I, I like about it, but that's what scares me a lot about it. So um, when you ask like if I'm ever going to do a performance in front of people, maybe, but um, just editing the video, actually, I could, it was really hard for me mm -hmm. to do. And um, with, when it comes to the body, I, I think it gives possibilities, but it's also like my body and it also grounds, uh, grounds me because like I had a performance where I was at, um, now it's um, Presa Gallery, but it was our gallery at the time um, where I just got drunk off of um, wine, of a box wine, that was the performance. And um, I had to stop myself and be like, okay, well, I can either just like throw up and pass out in front of everyone here, or I can like stop the performance. And it was about that like boundary that was like, I was like, well, it would, like, do I want to do that and shock everyone and be like, oh yeah, Megan threw up last night, Pressa, or do I want to like and like never <laughs> live it down, or did I want to like stop it, realize that I'm a human being, and like have that be like. Um, that uncomfortable of seeing someone about to like really go over the edge, be that tension. So I think that's where I'm coming from with performance. It's not doing it in a very like shocking, like I want to like just like scratch my skin and see like blood and have it be ugh. Like I wanted it. I want it to be like something that people see and can be um, fascinated, uncomfortable, but know that like nothing is probably going to happen. But, so what happened in that performance? Um, I, I got really, really sick and I threw up afterwards. And luckily, I, I think I was, um, my boyfriend at the time, like I just called him, I was like, pick me up, <laughs> pick me up. And um, he did, and he, he took care of me, he was really nice, and, um, but I was just done, and I did it for the art. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and then I, I will never do that again. That's never gonna happen again. <laughs> So we may have time for one more question, if there's one right, right here. Thank you. Just a quick note, I was at that press of performance, so it was really uncomfortable to be in the audience yeah. because we weren't sure if we should intervene or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a quick question. You mentioned that you asked your sister and your brother to help sometimes either uh, as a performer or as um, crew, like videography. Mm -hmm. Um, what has it been like to work with your with your siblings? Has that changed your family dynamic? Um, Are they here? Uh, they I don't. Uh, my mom is here. No. <laughs> Have you worked with your mom? No. no. <laughs> is your sister an artist? To. Uh, is my sister and ours? No, none of my fam immediate family are artists um, at all. Um, well, the only reason that I think um, 
I was, I think I was too scared to do performance myself, so that's why I asked my sister to do it, and I wanted to look at it like in a very Matthew Barney, like I'm a director, and I'm like, what, like I'm going to, I can control it more, and I can see it aesthetically, but um, we did like this performance at Walmart with her together, and she hated it, and she was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> And so, and I understood it because everyone was staring and she was really uncomfortable. So I think like, well, my brother likes film and everyone's really creative and we all have a sensibility. I don't know if it's changed it necessarily. It's made us probably closer and, um, but I don't think they really, none of my family really kind of um, particularly, they're just like, oh, that's something weird Megan does. <laughs> and they're just kind of like, okay, like that's just Megan, like whatever. <laughs> All right, well, great. Thank you so Thank much. You. And <laughs>